man we are down to the final contest we got eight hotels in the mix and we're gonna see who's gonna make it who's gonna win it all oh you guys didn't know yeah this isn't just a hotel review this is a competition and the winner takes all let's go ahead and do the countdown and see what hotels we reviewed and let's see who's gonna win i am bruce jordan I'm a former ISG corporate and I manage over $1 billion in assets and $300 million in revenue. Well, Michael Jordan is the basketball, Bruce Jordan is the same to the hotel industry. My main goal is to make your hotel more money. And this is another episode of Hotel Management Do's and Don'ts. Coming in at number eight, which is last place, unfortunately, is going to be the best Western Orlando Gateway Hotel located of course in orlando florida this hotel unfortunately came in last place but what i loved about this hotel was the revenue management this hotel was the only hotel that received a, a 10 a 10 in revenue management this this hotel's revenue manager chad was amazing he was even able to sell out the hotel a uh, perfect sell a couple of times in the middle of a pandemic this guy is no joke and he is serious. But unfortunately, they came in last place. Better luck next time. Coming in at number seven is the Sleep Inn in Kingsland. This hotel was okay. Um, they just got a new renovation and they were still trying to make their way back. But unfortunately, what really killed the deal for them is that they were just giving away too much for too little. You know, it's great to have high revenue numbers, but high revenue numbers doesn't make any sense when your percentages on the expenses side um, doesn't come together. So this hotel comes in at number seven. Coming in at number six is the Crown Plaza Lake Buena Vista in Orlando, Florida. This hotel had a beautiful design, beautiful renovation, big screen TV, it had everything you can want and ask for inside of a hotel. They had some very hardworking employees so it's just sad that they were just way understaffed and it was stretched way too thin. And when you're stretched way too thin, you start having little cracks inside of your, inside your operations. And that was what's going on over there. But they came back strong. They've been doing a great job ever since. They're back on the ball and they're making it happen. So we're gonna go ahead and put them at number six. Coming at number five is the Double Tree by Hilton SeaWorld. I love this hotel. It had two pools, jacuzzi, the whole nine yards. This hotel was amazing. It even had a UPS store, it had great customer service that can't be beat. Unstoppable, great design of the lobby. Love the comfortable beds and the pillows. This hotel definitely deserves to be at number five. They're working their way up and they're gonna get back on top on the next go round. Coming in at number four is the Palazzo Lakeside Hotel over here in Kissimmee, Florida. This hotel has a beautiful lake view, beautiful lake view, beautiful design, everything that you can expect from a great hotel. Crazy prices. That was the only thing that I, that this hotel that felt like the price was just way too low for a property this beautiful. But I'm pretty sure that they're working on that have been seeing their prices increase since this, these episodes came out and they're getting right back on the ball, hopping right back on the saddle and making it happen and making it work. And what I loved about this place is that this hotel was the only hotel that got a 10 with their breakfast. They had an amazing breakfast, amazing strategy, amazing strategy to control their costs for breakfast. And I loved it. And that's why they gave them a 10. Make sure you go check this hotel out. Coming in at number four. Now we have the top three hotels. And who's gonna win it all? These are the hotels that are in the top three that will one of these hotels will win season one of hotel management do's and don'ts. Hotel, let's start with yes, the country inn and suites by Radisson. This hotel really did its thing, and I love the COVID policies and procedures that they implemented. Who also made it to the top three was the Marriott in Clearwater Beach on Sand Key. This hotel was amazing. Amazing customer service, amazing, amazing design, right by the water. 
you know, right near the beach. You could walk from the hotel and just go right to the beach. Or you could walk, you, they had jet skiing, they had fishing, they had everything. Like this whole hotel had like a couple of different outlets. Amazing room, dual, dual ocean views inside of their rooms. Just absolutely amazing. So Marriott was able to make the top three. And guess who else made the top three? Hyatt Place Daytona Beach. Hyatt Place Daytona Beach made the top three. They came in and did their thing. Amazing hotel, beautiful property, great ocean views, um, had some hardworking employees. So you know what we're gonna do in our next episode. We are gonna find out which hotel out of these top three has won it all in season one on hotel management do's and don'ts. Let's make it happen. And as always, you know what we are here to do. Make sure you hit that button, that like and subscribe button. And we're here to make your revenues rise up once again. And we'll see you at the grand finale in our next and final episode for season one.